Hello, good morning students. Today I am going to teach chapter number 8 body movements. So first of all I would like to request to all of you that please see or watch the entire video because at the end of the video you will get some questions related to the topics which I will teach you today. So the topic of the chapter today I am going to teach that is gait of animals means how the animals whatever mentioned in your book these animals how they can move from one place to another place. So the topic I have already mentioned now the name of the animal first it is mentioned in your book page number 73 which is earthworm so what is written over here activity 5 observe an earthworm moving on soil in a garden gently lift it and press it on a piece of blotting or filter paper observe its movement then place it on a smooth glass plate or any slippery surface observe its movement now is it different from that on paper there is a question observe its movement now is it different from that on paper in which of the above two surfaces do you find that the earthworm is able to move easily so you know very well so they can move easily on little bit rough surfaces rather than on a totally smooth surface. The body of an earthworm is made up of many rings joined end to end. An earthworm does not have bones that you know. It has muscles which help to extend and shorten the body. During movement, the earthworm first extends the front part of the body, keeping the rear portion fixed to the ground. Then it fixes the front end and releases the near rear end. It then shortens the body and pulls the rear end forward. This makes it move forward by a small distance. Repeating such muscle expansions and contractions, the earthworm can move through soil. Its body secretes a slimy substance to help the movement because this slimy substance keep the surface smooth on which they move. How does it fix parts of its body to the ground? Under its body, it has a large number of tiny bristles, hair-like structures projecting out. If you will observe the two ends of their body properly, you will get to see the tiny bristles, hair-like structures. The bristles are connected with muscles. The bristles help to get a good grip on the ground. The earthworm actually eats its way through the soil, its body then throws away the undigested part of the material that it eats. This activity of an earthworm makes the soil more useful for plants. That's why earthworms are known as the friend of farmer that you have learnt in your earlier classes. Movement in earthworm involves the musculature of body wall and setae. The worm's body undergoes extension, anchoring and contraction during the course of its progression. A wave of contraction affecting circular muscles begins at the anterior end and travels posteriorly. These cause 
the body to become thinner and longer. This is followed by another wave of contraction affecting of body. This is again followed by the wave of thinning and the process is repeated alternately. Each wave of circular contraction causes the segments affected to move forward. But the segment is a CT of longitudinal contraction does not move as they are anchored to the ground by the protruded CT. CT always project out during circular contraction. It has been calculated that by this method the earthworm travel a distance of about 25 cm to 30 cm in a minute. When the direction of waves is reversed, the worms crawls backwards. During locomotion, silomic fluid serves as a kind of hydraulic skeleton or hydrostatic skeleton. When compressed due to contraction of circular muscle, it provides stiffness to body and aids in relaxation of longitudinal muscle. Students, now our next topic is snail. I know you all have seen snail uh, besides your houses. Observe a snail in your garden or in field. Have you seen the rounded structure it carries on its back? This is called the shell and it is the outer skeleton of the snail. But it is not made of bones. The shell is a single unit and does not help in moving from place to place. It has to be dragged along. Place the snail on a glass plate and watch it when it starts moving. Carefully lift the glass plate along with the snail over your head. Observe its movements from beneath. A stick structure and the head of the snail may come out of an opening in the shell. The thick structure is its foot made of strong muscles that you know. Now carefully tilt the glass plate. The wavy motion of the foot can be seen. Is the movement of a snail slow or fast as compared to an earthworm? So that you know, if you will compare the movement of snail with the movement of earthworm, you will see the movement of snail is much more slow than an earthworm. Very, very slow. So this is the movement of snail. How do snails move? Well, snails have a highly muscular foot that is adapted for traveling over hard surfaces. The so snails such as this land snail move by gliding along their muscular foot through succeeding waves of muscular contraction that move up and down the foot from their tail to their head. Now these waves of contraction can be clearly seen when a land snail is crawling on a transparent surface such as a window. Snails also secrete mucus to help prevent desiccation and drying out. And mucus also helps it to move by reducing friction, making the ground a slippier and easier surface to travel on, meaning that snails can even crawl over sharp objects such as razor blades without getting injured.
our next topic is the movement of cockroach so all of you have seen the cockroaches at your home basically in the kitchen at your home cockroaches walk and climb as will as fly in the air so two types of movement can be seen in case of the movement of cockroaches first of all they can walk and climb and second they can fly also they have three pairs of legs these help in walking the body is covered with a hard outer skeleton this outer skeleton is made of number of plates joined together and that permits movement there are two pairs of wings attached to the body behind head the cockroaches have distinct muscles those near the legs move the legs for walking the body muscles move the wings when the cockroaches flies so whenever they walk the front two legs basically pull their body forward middle two legs at that moment keep the body balance and the back two legs or pair of legs that moment pushes their body in front so this way they can move on any surface like walls floor ceiling etc students our next topic is birds how they can move like cockroaches birds can also move in two ways they can fly as well as they can walk so birds fly in the air and walk on the ground so some birds like ducks and swans also swim in water the birds can fly because their bodies are well suited for flying their bones are hollow and light the bones of the hind limbs are typical for walking and perching the bony parts of the fore limbs are modified as wings the shoulder bones are strong the breast bones are modified to hold the muscles of flight which are used to move the wings up and down so when you will go to the higher classes then then you will this means learn about the movement of birds it will depend on basically the newton's third law of motion action and reaction the topics will be action and reaction so they give the action to the air with their wings and automatically the air gives the reaction force on their wings that's why they can fly easily students our next topic is the movement of fish how they can swim so one activity is also there in your book make a paper boat put it in water and push it with one narrow end pointing forward did it go into the water easily now hold the boat sideways and push it into the water from the board from the broad side are you able to make the boat move in water when you push it from this side have you noticed that the shape of a boat is somewhat like a fish the head and tail of the fish are smaller than the middle portion of the body 
the body tapers at the both ends both ends this body shape is called streamlined body shape like you can see for the cars like you can see for the aeroplanes or jet planes or the bigger size of ships boats this shape is known as streamlined body shape and this idea scientists have got from the shape of fishes and the shape of snakes so their structure of the body is streamlined shape or you can say the bird's body shape is also like streamlined shape the front part of the body will be very narrow and the back part of the body will be little bit wider that they can easily overcome the frictions means uh, friction forces like water air so these kind of frictional forces or opposing forces they can easily overcome as they have the streamlined body shape the shape is such that water can flow around it easily and allow the fish to move in water the skeleton of the fish is covered with strong muscles during swimming muscles make the front part of the body curve to one side and the tail part swings towards the opposite side the fish forms a curve as shown in figure in your book 8.24 then quickly the body and the tail curve to the other side this makes a jerk and pushes the body forward a series of such jerks make the fish swim ahead this is helped by the fins of the tail fish also have other fins on their body which mainly help to keep the balance of the body and to keep direction while swimming Did you ever notice that underwater divers divers wear fin like flippers on their feet to help them move easily in water Movement in fish Fish have a streamlined body which helps them move fast in water Fish swim with the help of their fins The tail moves from side to side and helps the fish swim in the right direction. Some fish however move by bending their bodies from one side to another in quick succession which produces a thrust that helps it move forward. Okay students so this is the last topic of movement or gates of animals from this chapter and this is also the last part of this chapter. afterwards the chapter and syllabus both will be done for your half yearly so the topic is how do snakes move have you seen a snake slither does it move straight snakes have a long backbone they have many thin muscles they are connected to each other even though they are far from one another muscles also interconnect the backbone ribs and skin the snake's body curves into many loops each loop of the snake gives it a forward push by pressing against the ground since its long body makes many loops and each loops each loop gives it gives it this push the snake moves forward very fast and not in a straight line we have learned about the use of bones and muscles for the movements of different animals pehli and vojo have many questions in their sex about the different movements in animals so much so must you have you be having many unanswered questions buzzing in your mind so at the end of the part, video the last part is also there regarding yoga why it is better for your health yoga is an invaluable gift of ancient indian tradition the united nations declared 21 or 21st june as international day of yoga yoga keeps a person healthy it helps in keeping the backbone erect enabling you 
to sit straight and not slouch slouch many postures in yoga require you to lift your own weight which help in making the bone strong and help word of osteoporosis it also helps in revealing joint pain which is mostly observed in elderly people it turns all muscles in the body and keeps them active it keeps the heart healthy and makes it work more efficiently certain yoga postures should be performed under the supervision of a trained person movement in snake snakes move in s shaped loops and in a zigzag manner they cannot move in a straight line they have difficulty in moving on very smooth surfaces Snakes have a long backbone and many interconnected muscles that help them to slither. Snakes can move in grass, sand and water. Snakes do not have arms or legs, but even then they can climb trees. Now a few questions from this part or from this topic body movements the gait of animals few questions for you students. How do earthworms move? How do snails move? how do cockroaches move why is streamline what is streamlined body give examples how do birds move how do fishes move how do snakes move why yoga is required for better health or to maintain better health Thank you students, have a nice day.